If I could then go to the other SDLP consideration, and both uh, Alvin McGuinness, uh, Mark Durkin, Alec Atwood, I think in particular Alec Atwood, dealt with the, the issue of uh, the departure from the hunt. Uh, I really at times do wonder, does anybody really think that the heart and soul of the Belfast Agreement was the hunt? That somehow it is the indispensable part of the Belfast Agreement? That somehow it is of such import, such moment, that nothing else can exist unless the hunt is in place? And to listen to the members who treat the hunt as if it was the law of the Medes and Persians which changeth not. It is a mechanism. That's all it is. It is a mechanism within proportional representation. So I want to look at what this great sin is, what this draconian measure that the Deputy First Minister and I were proposing to the ALERC committee should be deployed in order to get a Justice Minister appointed. Because very clear, it must be dreadful. It must be some bigoted system that we have concocted. It must be partisan in the way that it is presented. Because nothing can compare to the punk. What is this system? The system is that we want to ensure that both sections of our community are supportive of who the new Justice Minister will be to such an extent that we don't only require a majority of members in this assembly to endorse it, but we want to ensure that it is endorsed by a majority of the nationalist members of this assembly and a majority of the unionist members of this assembly. That ensures that the person who is appointed has the support across the community and not simply the confidence of a nominating officer because that's all you would have in relation to the hunt. The position is of such importance that we believe that second mile was necessary to ensure that the person appointed had the confidence of the widespread community. And I admit from a party point of view, I don't have the kind of adherence uh, to the, uh, the hunt system that uh, the Ulster Unionists have declared themselves to have and the SDLP have declared themselves to have. It's a system which can give a result in terms of uh, proportional representation. But I would rather be a justice minister who is appointed by the cross-community vote of this assembly than just simply by the nominating officer of my party. That would give me a lot more force, strength, I believe, and indeed influence within the community. I'll give way. Minister for giving way. The key principle in the Good Friday Agreement is democratic inclusion according to mandate. And yes, the hunt was one mechanism to achieve that. Yes, there are others. But the key principle is democratic inclusion according to mandate. This bill bypasses that because it creates a situation where a party is able to deliberately discriminate against a party who is entitled to a further ministry and pick another party whose mandate does not so entitle them. It's democratic inclusion according to mandate. That's the issue. And the First Minister told me upstairs that the reason the DUP want this option is so that they can permanently veto Sinn Féin. It was a permanent veto. That's what he told me directly and honestly in discussions. So let him not pretend that it is otherwise. I, I think we've already dealt with the, the issue of Sinn Féin holding the, the ministry. Sinn Féin already indicated that they weren't going to put anybody forward. Sinn Féin already were within a structure where we had that ability. But in spite of having that ability, we decided that this was the first possible system and one which was likely to bring the widest level of support for the person who would have that post. And this isn't a unique methodology that we are using. I'm not just talking about us using this methodology when we have critical votes in the Assembly. But we have our Speaker, who is elected by this methodology. The Deputy First Minister and I are required to have that level of support. So there's nothing new about recognizing that, the, that well, just, there is nothing new in the fact that there are positions that are, I'm talking about positions which are appointed by a system which is different than his precious to hunt.
The hunt is not the only way. It's not the only show in town, it has to be said. Uh, and very clearly, as far as the community is concerned, I can't think of any issue where it is more important to have cross-community support than on the, the matter of policing and justice to have a minister who has support drawn clearly from both sections of the community. I, just, I'll, I'll give way again to the, the minister. I haven't denied anybody the, the right of an intervention. I, I would also say to him that uh, in relation to his mathematics, if it had been a case of us deciding to use the uh, hunt system, then we wouldn't have been adding an additional department because they, the, the method, an additional minister, we could have still kept within the 10. It would have had no impact in terms of giving the SDLP an extra place. But we reckon that because we hadn't decided the final outcome of the way we would operate until 2012, that this was a good step to take until then so that we could see how it works, see how it operates uh, and be able to make judgments based on that. A good way. I thank the First Minister for giving me. He might recall that in our discussions we made it clear that if parties choose the option of keeping to ten departments, creating a new department and merging some others, we had no problem with that on the basis that the haunt would be run. That's what the agreement requires and envisages. We never opposed that. We actually wanted that. He's the man who says he wants to reduce the number of departments. He's the man who rejected that option. And it was because he didn't want the haunt at all, because it was democratic inclusion according to mandate. That was the agreement. And it would not allow him veto Sinn Féin or any other nationalist that he chose to veto. But the member shouldn't get excited. He's not going to get me standing here and denying the, the fact that I have no attachment to the hunt. I, I put my hand up to that. I don't believe that the, the hunt has any exceptional parts or provides us with any exceptional outcomes in terms of any other proportional system that we could operate. In many ways, it distorts the outcome. And of course, I mean, if I could take it even a step further, because I, I go back to the, the initial uh, proposition which I put, which is that while this executive has been able to agree much more often than its predecessor executive, it has reached more decisions than they have uh, and has operated more smoothly than the previous executive did, without the interruptions by suspensions and uh, collapse uh, as it turned out to, to be. The fact remains that there are still improvements that can be made, and we still haven't dealt with the issue which affects the cross benchers, if I can call them that, where effectively when we deal with some votes uh, in this uh, assembly we are saying that they don't really count in these matters. So of course I am ready to, in the AERC committee or elsewhere to look at all of these issues about how we make appointments, about how the First Minister and Deputy First Minister are appointed. We can have all of those uh, in the, the mix and we can consider how we might go forward in them. And maybe someday we will get change that uh, is beneficial and normalises the democratic rules within this chamber. I'll give away. Thank the First Minister for giving way. I mean, some members during the course of this debate have talked about the agreement as though it was the end point of a process. I mean, would the First Minister not agree with me that actually the agreement was put in place in order that we could facilitate further agreements and developments in this place that would be democratically challenged as they're being debated here today so that we can actually further democracy and we can actually further progress rather than simply enshrine everything into, uh, in 1998 and fail to see that any further progress can be made? Well, I think the member is absolutely right. Some people treat politics and political ideology as if it is theology. You know, it shouldn't change. It uh, is fixed. Uh, politics moves, circumstances change, uh, improvements can be made, new systems can be recognised, uh, new conditions apply and therefore changes uh, are necessary. Politics, even if the agreement didn't uh, allow for change, politics will require change uh, and you can never stay in one fixed point in terms of, of uh, politics. Uh, and uh, I think that it would be a nonsense for us to say, even if we can improve on what has gone before, what has gone before is so special, so important, that we can't change one word, one dot, or one tittle of it. I mean, that is never going to be the, the position for any sensible politician to take. If improvements can be 